So at the top of your page, I want you to have both equations that we saw in the, vi the video. The main one is y equals kx, where our k is our constant. And we talked yesterday that we, I believe, they use the variable k because it has the same sound as constant, but a c could be confused by a number, right? It could look like a zero or a six if it was like looped wrong. This is what we call an equivalent equation. And they show it in the video really, really quickly. But if this is k times x is equal to y, <laughs> if I take that x and I divide it, x over x would be 1, because anything over itself is 1. That would leave us with just k. y divided by x is what we would get on this side. That's how they're equivalent. We took this x and instead of multiplying it by the k, we're now dividing it by the x. So y divided by x gives us our constant, and we played with that a little bit when we looked at these two tables, didn't we? We did y divided by x, y divided by x over and over, and every time with this first table we came up with a constant of what? Two. What happened when we tried to do it on this side? The numbers were not the same. We ended up with all sorts of different numbers. So we said that this one was proportional, but this one was not proportional. And then we looked at our, our graphs. The graphs are quick visual. We don't have to do math to find them, do we? So we looked at this and we said, okay, yeah, it's a straight line, but it has to have two things for it to be proportional, a straight line and through the what? Which we see here, don't we? This one starts at the number one, so it's not going through the origin. So that makes that not a proportional line going through the origin. We were really close to the bell yesterday on this, so I wanted to just talk through this because it may have been really rushed and I want to make sure people understand. We labeled this X and what? Y. The tables are always that way. The X is on the left and the Y is on the right. right. And what we did is we went and we did y divided by x over and over again, just like the equation we wrote on the front page. And what constant we did, uh, did we end up with? Two. The first question said, what is the constant of proportionality and how do you know? And we wrote 2. And some of you wrote, I divided y by x. Or we found that it was 2 every time we divided, right? I just wrote the equation again just to make it really shortcut. We stopped on B because we didn't really have enough time. This is asking what is the unit rate of water used per minute? So I want you to write that with variables. Water per minute. And we can't just use our table because there's no X that's a one. Whenever we're doing a unit rate, one of our numbers is gonna be one. And because this tells us per minute, that's meaning per one minute, right? So this is equal to one minute. And our question is, how many gallons of water are used in one minute? What do you guys think it is? Lisa? It is two. How did you get it? Say that you divided 8 by 4 and 4 by 4. So he's saying if this number is going to be a 1, I have to divide it by a 4. Like if we were going to put another call at another place in this column, and if I'm dividing this by 4, I'm also dividing this by 4, and that gets me 1, 2, 2. Did anybody do it differently? That's how I did it too, so thank you for saying that. Yeah. Constant. Okay. Because it's the constant, and I want you guys to look at the second question here and think about what Jade just said. How does this relate to your answer in part one? Well, if this is two, and I want you to think about it's the constant of proportionality. If two is our y, which is really kind of what Musa said, 
He said, if I was going to add another thing here where I had this be 1 and this be 2, or anyway, this be 1, I'd have to divide 4 by 1 and get 1. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. 4 divided by 4 is what you said and got 1. 8 divided by 4 would get us 2. That means the y is 2, doesn't it? So if I'm going to rewrite this as y over x, then we would get 2 over 1. We're saying in the x part of the column we'd have 1, and in the y part of the column we'd have 2. And as Jade pointed out, that's the same as this, isn't it? Yes. So how does this relate to your answer in part 1? Go ahead and try to put it in your own words. Bless you. How, do, how is it related? And go ahead and try answering letter C in your own words as well. Evan, I should see you writing. We're going to do C together really quickly. Explain how to figure out how many gallons of water are used for any shower length. What's happening here? We can see it. Thank you. I'm looking at the table. If we did division, we said x divided by 4 gave us 2. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So if I said I was going to have a 5-minute shower, how many gallons of water would I use? Okay. What did you guys do? Uh, times it by 2. You multiplied by 2, right? So basically we're saying if I have any length of shower, that's my x, because that's my... Call the first column, the length of the shower is the x, and if I multiply that by 2, is it going to give me how many gallons? Yes. That's using the x and y. The other way I could do this is I could say 2 times the minutes equals the gallons. So in our table, our minutes are our x column, and our gallons are our y column, but if I want to change the variable to just be things that kind of sound like the, the words in the problem, we could rewrite it as 2 times the minutes equals the number of gallons. Does that make sense how these two are related? Okay. Then let's take a look at letter D. It's calling the length of the shower S, and I hate using an S as a variable because my S's always look like a 5. If the length of the shower is in minutes, can we change that to an M? That's what we mean by variable. We can vary what the letter is based on what we need. Let's change that S to an M. And instead of the amount of water, let's use the G like we used above because its measurement is in gallons, isn't it? I just want them to match what we used up above. So we're going to call the length of the shower m and the amount of water used g. Identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. So my question for you is, what depends on what? Does the number of minutes depend on the number of gallons used, or does the number of gallons used depend on the number of minutes of the shower? The gallons. Say that louder, Brianna. How many gallons you use depends on how long your shower is. Does that make sense? 
Yes. Okay, I want you to go back up here and look at this. That means that the Y depends on the X. And that's true every single time. Y always depends on X. Well, down here, we're going to put what our independent is. Our minutes is our independent. What depends on the other? The gallons. And let's put next to that the independent is X and dependent is Y because that's going to be true in every single table. It says, and then write an equation to represent the relationship between minutes and gallons. Well, we already did that up above, didn't we? This is our equation. Two times the minutes equals our gallons. That's our equation. So I'm going to stop talking now and let you guys do page two, which is very similar. And I'm sorry, not page two, problem two on page three and page four. Can you turn the back of page four? Because I want to talk about this really quickly, page four. These kind of graphs drive me a little bit crazy because it's asking me what's the constant of proportionality. This is my X. This is my Y. And I'm trying to find something that's going to tell me how many pages read per minute. But here's my one minute. And can you tell what that number is if you go up on that line? It looks like it's about a third, but I'm not exactly sure, right? So whenever I have a graph like this, I go and I find points like this. Do you see what I'm talking about with that three? Mm -hmm. It's right on that line. Can you find any others where it crosses exactly instead of at a fraction? It's 12. There's Six, I heard 12, 15. nine, and 15. There is a pattern there, isn't there? Three, six, nine, twelve for the minutes. And then what's happening with the pages read? One, two, three, because I'm looking at these numbers now. Do you guys see what I'm looking at? What's this one? And then five. So if I asked you if this person read 30 minutes a night, how many pages would they read? I heard the number. Nine. If they double 15 to 30 minutes, what's going to happen to the pages? It would go to 10, wouldn't it? So this graph, you can kind of picture it would just keep growing, growing, growing in a steady way. It's proportional. It's a straight line, and it goes through the... Which makes sense. If I've read zero minutes, I'm going to get zero pages. Okay, I just wanted to point out, use these points on the line. Don't try to do this crazy little one over place, okay?